So today we're going to talk about the teacher-student data line. But before we dive into that, let's talk a little bit about why we selected education as our profession in the first place. So it's really about creating positive outcomes for students, helping them to be successful. So with that in mind, we want you to think again and imagine. So is it about educating students in new and creative ways? Colorado, should it be on the forefront of educating students so that our students are curious, interested, but are well prepared for college and our workforce? And teachers, giving teachers important student information, tools, resources, and valuable support so that they are empowered to build learning plans that are personalized for every individual student. The teacher-student data link is a critical component to help making some of this really become a reality. It is designed to give you valuable information and it's going to empower teachers to validate information that's in this system. So let's back up a minute and give you a little context so that you're clear on what TSDL means. So I'm going to abbreviate that instead of saying teacher student data and how it really fits in to the whole complex CDE system because it's all connected with a real specific vision or mission. So let's begin with, so what is CDE and what are they about? So let's look at our vision first and say first, the vision all students in Colorado will become educated and productive citizens capable of succeeding in a global competitive workforce. The vision, the mission of CDE is to shape, support, and safeguard a statewide education system that prepares students for success in a globally competitive world. So the mission tells you why, and clarifies that statement, what we're expecting, and that it's an official state level mission and mission. <coughs> they encompass the, biggest, encompass the biggest and the most basic picture of what CDE is, and how it centered its work around outcome from students. So let's take a, look, a little bit closer look at the state education goals. So we have them on the left hand side, four major buckets, right? We focus on students first. We want our kids, when they leave us, to be successful. You know, when you think about a kindergarten student, you want them to be successful in first grade. But sometimes it's hard to pull yourself out of that first grade window and think about it as a whole. So we at the department think about it as all of the students in Colorado being on track to graduate so that they can be competitive for whatever opportunities exist for them in the 21st century that we're supposed to be preparing them for. But then when we think about the students, we have to not forget about the educators. So this little section here is about great teachers and great leaders. We believe that teachers deserve to have leaders for their schools that provide them the time to collaborate to do this kind of planning that is required for this personalization. We believe that students deserve to have great teachers in front of them in the classrooms. Now, we know that there's a lot of great teachers out there, and we don't want the message to be about, wow, there's so many bad people out there. Instead, it's about all of us are out there doing the best we can with the tools that we have. How can we increase the things that are working and desist the things that we've been doing over time that haven't generated the types of results that we expect. Again, we can do this multiple ways with you as teachers, but also by doing better in preparation. I don't know about you, but in my preparation, it was like two different worlds. There was the college preparation, and then there was like reality. Of course, then when I became a school administrator, the same thing happened. You know, it's like you don't get prepped necessarily for the environment that you're going to be put into. And of course here with eliminating the equity gap. This is just basically about saying, are we sure that our kids who have the most demonstrated need have teachers with the most demonstrated effectiveness working with them? Next, we've got schools and districts. We've got a lot of outstanding schools and districts in this room right here and watching this video later. A lot of the people are in school districts that have demonstrated excellence. How can we increase that state so that there's not pockets of excellence where the kid has to be fortunate enough to live to benefit from that? 
And then finally, we want to be the best state agency in the world. In the world. And in order to do that, we want to be more strategic in our thinking, and we want to offer the supports that we can, but we also want to put policies into place that don't inhibit innovation. Because one of the things that's best about being in Colorado is the ability to have a Colorado vision and realize it. So there's, that's where this all comes in. We think we can do better with our satisfaction. And then finally, how can we attract people? We know the mountains get them here, but we know that the vast majority of our districts are not by the mountains. So how can we keep them? So where are we today? There's, <laughs> there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of different things that districts are forced to comply with. Because we as a state agency, we also monitor things. Okay? So we're the regulatory agency. So we have to collect a lot of information. What we're trying to do is reduce the redundancy and make things less, less time consuming and collect the things that make a difference. It's kind of like when you're out there and you, I don't know if you like cook dinner or if you do a ritual when you do chores, but some things you could probably eliminate if you would allow yourself. You'd still get the same result, but you have these few things that you do all the time. Now, data is usually captured annually, so it's difficult to see things in a real timely manner. I'm not a real big slide reader, so I'm kind of like making sure that I do this. Um, <laughs> educational data. So we have a lot of data, but how does it all work? What does it all mean? You know, when you turn on your car and all the lights light up, it's overwhelming. If only the gas light lights up, you know you better hit a gas station. So there's all kinds of data out there. How can we use it to provide timely information so that people can use it to make decisions? Finally. These last two bullets are talking about, you know, how can we support educators by giving them the types of data that they need to adjust their planning? Of course, then there's timeliness, right? Like, congratulations, here's your CSAC results. Yes, they were for your kids you had in your class two years ago. <laughs> like, what value is that? And then finally here, this is the part that, as a former teacher, while well, I consider myself a long -line, lifelong teacher, being able to tell somebody which students we're in my class sufficiently that you should hold me accountable for it. Right? And I, it's just, that's where it's all at. So the bottom line is this. We owe it to you and to the students that you teach to be able to provide you with better things to support them. So that's it. We need better information about what really works. And the only way we can do it is by capturing a lot of this and then studying it. So the teacher-student data link, right? That's the genesis of a support tool. Colorado has unique identifiers <coughs> for the educator in Colorado. You guys might call them EBITs. Integrating those identifying numbers into existing data collections so that we can see how or what the relationships are between the EBITs and the information that's collected. And then linking that data to the student data. I want to go back to that slide earlier, though. I want to link it to the right students. That's the hardest part. <clears throat> so here's the tree of all of those things that are happening in the state. And I know state agencies that are reform-minded is like, one more thing, come on, we're not doing enough. Please let us do extra. But here are all the things. <coughs> Senate Bill 1036, how are we improving education programs so that people are being prepped to enter the workforce ready? Educator Identifier System Pilot, 2009. Here we are, 2012. We have learned some lessons, but we have to broaden it. That's why we're out here tonight. 9, 1065, the Educator Identifier to Link to Student Data. That's what Linda was referring to earlier. And then 2007, the Quality Teachers Commission. Also, the Educator Identifier System Legislative. I guess it grows up, right? Like the new stuff on the top. Maybe I should have started down here and gone up. All right, Renell, sorry about that. Maybe you just put an error there for me. Um, what you probably don't see there is Senate Bill 10 191. All right, so the evaluations, they're part of what we're dealing with every day in the news, but the teacher student data link is about much more than that. So the next slide is going to talk to us about RISE relevant information to strengthen education. So we've got four nice words here, and this is like that overall place where we think we can do all those things that we talked about in the previous slides. 
We think we can capture important information about all the students in Colorado. We think we can link that data to the places that it needs to be linked to. Then we can provide timely reports or information back to the people who need them the most in order for them to perform whatever is necessary. So we've got RISE, and if you can think about them, capture, link, provide, and perform, and this teacher-student data link is right here in the link. Isn't that nice? Link and link. Sometimes things work out that way. Toby's given you a lot of background information. What I want to do now is just focus on three really big buckets. First one, so what is this? What's it all about? This gives teachers information on how their instruction really impacts student outcomes. That's its simplest form. Why are we doing it? Other than it's part of the tree with a legislative action, is it the right work for us to do? Does it allow teachers to validate systems? Does it provide teachers with better information and better professional development? Will it foster personalization for not only instruction, but again, professional development? And how does that hook into educator effectiveness? And the bottom line, when this system is all built, will it make a difference for student outcomes and for teacher practice? Who will benefit? Simplest system. After it's built, is it going to make a difference for educators? Or is it going to be a system on top and not give us relevant information? Does it help districts find and track students in and out in teacher mobility? How do we connect teachers to schools? Principals and other administrators, how do we really help them plan their professional development around the data that they're getting from the system? Parents, will parents be able to access data to really look at where their students are and then for students, will it give them accurate data of where they're at? And what's their individual growth plan in this whole big system? So going to the next, where again it connects to this arrow, only this time let's start at the bottom. And let's really look at, Toby mentioned that Colorado wants to be the best state education agency in the nation. Does this system help them get there? Will it help them collect data across districts, across higher ed? How can they really gain or gain data that will really improve insights in how to best support teachers and districts, ultimately parents and students? The second one, schools and districts. How can this system really help outstanding schools and districts? What kind of data? Can they track mobility of students in and out? Will it help a district find out which kids are connected to which teachers or which students aren't connected to which teachers? How do we look at that shared attribution? And will this data system really drive more decision-making processes based on the real data that right now we don't have? Educators, great teachers and leaders, that's easy to say. We don't have a lot of data behind that. So as an educator, what are some of the things you can ask yourself that this data system will really make a difference for improved preparation at higher ed, your own professional development linked to now the quality standards? How will that link together? And it's all about, at the top, students. So how do we really have students be growth globally competitive and workforce ready so all of this moves up to really imply, to improve, not only improve learning experiences for teachers, but for students and their parents. <coughs>